great. Can I slide this anywhere? Yeah, so let's just say this is vector A. Let's pretend that this was vector A. It went what? Maybe it went like 6 to the right and 2 up. Let's pretend that's what it is. Right? But can I slide this anywhere in the xy plane? Mm -hmm. You bet. And you can be a equivalent vector. So when I have a vector way over here, like vector B, it's way up here. It has the same direction. It has the same magnitude. I want to make sure I make this a little bit better looking here. Hold on. Yeah, that's close enough. Okay. There's vector B. It's also 6, 2. But can I say these are equivalent vectors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the cool thing about vectors. How it's so powerful allows us to do so much mathematically. Allows us to do so much mathematically like we consider these to be equivalent. Because they have the same magnitude, they have the same direction, right? Well, I was just curious. Then what would be negative vectors? Same thing, but same. opposite direction. Same thing, but opposite direction. And you could slide it anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So it would look like this. You don't even have to draw it. But uh, what would be its two uh, components? Then? Negative 6, negative 2. Yeah, they're saying, I'll start here. They said just negative the actual vector, vector, which would turn into negative 6, negative 2. They're saying it would go in the complete opposite direction at the same length, though, right? If you wanted to draw it. Like, yeah, start here and just go. Yeah, but then again, you can slide it. Keep, keep that in mind. I use that word slide. Like, just move it over here. Move it over there. And consider what problem you're applying, applying it to. Does everyone care about that? Hey, cool. All right. Um, hey, I want to do a unit vector again. The last time I used six two, uh, one, two. Let's just use another. How about like two, two, three? I'm going to make this one negative. Sometimes the negative can throw you off. So when I was just wondering, could you find a unit vector that has the same direction as the vector I have right there? Because that does not have length of one, does it? Okay, but we already have a map folder, don't we? You nailed it. You just nailed it. You go, you knew this was Pythagorean theorem. I have to divide out the what? The magnitude. But you're just like, well, how do you get the magnitude of a three-dimensional vector? It's kind of like this, isn't it? That's exactly what you're doing. You're doing Pythagorean theorem extended. So here's my answer. I'll put it right here. There you go. But what are we dividing out? The square root of, all right, what is the square root? 2 squared <coughs> plus negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared plus 3 squared. 3 squared. 4 and 4 is 8. 8 and 9 is 17. There you go. Leave your answer like that, unless you want to distribute it, right? Don't you have to do the square root up? Like root that's, what, that's what they call, Art, great question, they call that rationalizing the denominator. Yeah. So when I was a student, I really left my math courses, especially undergraduate. I left undergraduate mathematics thinking I just always had to rationalize the denominator no matter what. So I would rationalize this. Then I got to graduate level math and I noticed they just never leaving answers like this. It's like, and they were lying to me the whole time. So the whole idea of rationalizing the denominators is like, do it if it makes the problem better, like if it improves it. If it doesn't, I don't think, you know, you don't have to. Because to me, it's more writing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. This would turn into 2 squared of 17 over 1. 17, right? Well, that's nice and, nice and elegant. So Art, you can totally leave it like this. But I, I, I get what you're saying, Art. Like, a number like this, I wouldn't leave my answer like that if that was my mathematical answer. Because if I rationalize that denominator, it looks prettier. How would you rationalize that denominator? And Art, look what you get. You get 2 squared of 2, and this turns into what? 2. Just a 2. Anything cancel? 2. And see how nice it got? So that's what we're talking about. Like, I will do that if I know it's going to like, oh, this will look way better than 2 over squared. Two, but this wouldn't have got much better, would it? No. Like Unless you want to distribute it. Hey, I'm going to extend this question. That's a unit vector. <coughs> how long is that vector? 
it has a length of 1. Unit vectors have a length of 1. So my next question is, what if on the first test, what if in the practice set, what in the textbook they go, I want you to find a vector that has the same direction as this vector, but has length 10. I want to know how you do that. Multiply. So just take this answer that you just did and just simply put a what here. Yeah. That'll do it. So if you want to think of it as two steps, when they ask you to do this, go first step, make it a unit vector. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. And you shrink it back to a 1, then you multiply the down. So here's my answer to that. Ta-da! Unless you want to just show me 20 or we're at 17. I don't know if the practice said I got multiple choice problems, so I can't quite <coughs> distribute it. Distribute that and stuff around. Hey, good job of that. Um, what else in 12.2? Um, how do you add vectors? I mean, we saw the triangle all, right? So how do you add vectors together? Some vectors. It's pretty cool. If I wanted to add it vector A to vector B, let's say vector A was 2 comma 3, vector B was negative 1 comma 4. You gotta love adding vectors. How do you sum vectors? Add the components. We just add the components. So 2 plus negative 1 is 1. 3 plus 4 is you just simply add components. So if someone asks you to go, hey, go get the length of vector a plus b, now you get that magnitude, right? Now this is really important. I like 12. They really hit on some key things like, I bet you all know this vector stuff, but just important things we're going to need throughout the whole count course. They're hitting right away in section 12 too. How do you get vectors from points? That's what we're going to talk about. How do you get vectors from points? Because this is going to happen throughout our whole course. They're just going to get us like an x, y, z coordinate. Hey, that's a point one, two, three, and that's point where like you and I are going to want to generate a vector from those points. So I'm going to make up a vector. Excuse me, two points. How about let me start two-dimensional space? Uh, that's a point. That's the x. That's the y ordered pair. Here's another point. Yeah, I'm not even making any negatives. Let's just start with very simple positive. How do you make vectors from a point? I want you, let's call this point A. This is point B, and I want you to come out with vector AB. So this is another notation. And when I've been calling everything vector A or vector B, you know, Eric, sometimes they put the two letters, they put the arrow on top, right? Uh, this is the tip, and that's the tail. So when they write this mean, they mean the direction you start at A and you end at what? B. B. Does that make sense? Cool. Start at A, end at B. That's what they mean by that. How do I do this from points? What's the math method? Like tip minus the tail, right? Tip minus tail. I love that. Let's think tip minus tail. So it's a subtraction, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And we are just going to subtract the corresponding components. But we always do tip, subtract the tail. All right, what's 3 minus 1? What's 7 minus 3? And there you go. We do that a lot in the course. So I just want to point out, when you're going from points to vectors, um, then what's this? What's RQ? When R is... 0, 1, 3. Q is the point 4, 0, <coughs> 1. What's our Q? There's two points given. So basically, 4 minus 0, 0 minus 0. Tip minus three. tail, right? Mm -hmm. So 4 minus 0 is? 4. That's the x component of the vector. 0, zero minus, minus 1 is? Negative 1. And 1 minus 3? Negative 2. There's your vector. That's the vector we use. Vector RQ. And hey, what's vector QR? You can probably do it in your head. Just inverse it. 
Ma All those would be the same except the signs. Signs would switch, right? You got it. Opposite vector. So now, on 12-2, we've got to talk about Let me give you an angle. <coughs> I don't know if there are any degree. And then give me the magnitude. So let's just call this vector ray. Let's say vector ray is. I'll make it a little longer. I'm going to use vector ray of. Actually, you know what? Let's start out make this longer. Let's do 60 degrees. There's 60 degrees right there. I'm going to call this vector A, but I'm going to give its magnitude. And its magnitude is 6. This vector A, when I stuck it from the origin, but I could have slid this anywhere. We need a way to come up with the two <coughs> components of a vector when we're given the magnitude and an angle. The angle gives us the direction, right? Mm -hmm. We just need some mathematical way to get this thing going. It does involve a little trigonometry, though. So Kotoa, though. So this comes from So Kotoa. If I need to come up with vector A's components, that's what I'm asking you to do. I need both of these. How do you do that from this information? So Kotoa. One of them involves a cosine, one involves a sine. You know which one involves a cosine? The X. Okay. Yes. I want to tell you everyone why, because they're thinking of this as a little triangle here. And they're like, oh, so katoa, cosine of 60 is x over the, you know, the magnitude of the vector. And then you can call it what? Just the radius or the, we'll just call it c, right? So what would x equal? c times cosine of 60. Well, in this case, what was c? c was the magnitude of that vector. So they're telling me that to do this, all I gotta do is take that length and put the cosine of 60 right here. And I'm gonna do that right now. 6 cosine 60 degrees. That's the length of the x component. Y component will be very similar except which trig function? Sine. So, you got it. So that's something else is important when you have a you got an angle. Okay? You got the length, the magnitude, but you need to now come up with the two x, y components. <coughs> so hey, we're going to do a problem like this, and I think I'll use vector ray in our problem. Um, I want to tell you which one this is like. This is like number five in the practice set. Textbook. This is like numbers 32 and number 33 of the text. I'm just going to add another vector. So here's the vector I think I'll add. Let's take another vector on this x-axis. Uh, a length. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. I'm going to use a vector just... That could be about that long. The magnitude of vector B, everyone, is 2. The magnitude of vector A was 6. What do they want? They go, find the magnitude of the resultant vector. Now what do they mean by the resultant vector? When they want you to sum these two vectors. They want you to take vector A and vector, add vector B. Can I use a triangle wall? Can I do a tab with this one then? Yeah. Can you use tab? Use what? Ten, because ten, the resultant vector will be addition of these two, right? We, we can use trigonometry though, you're right. Or right, that was good. But I want to just think about like the image. What would vector A plus B look like? It's like I take this B and what? Slide it right there. Uh -huh. So there's vector B, I can slide it there. And then by the triangle law, we're looking for that vector. Do you all agree? If you want me to lightly do that, I just want you to see. So vector B, I can slide vector B, same direction, same length. There's A, there's B, and we're looking for what? 
Put a little bit back so there. that's we're looking for the length of that vector I just drew. You can call it vector a plus b. We're looking for its length. Well, how do you do this? Well, we know when it comes to adding vectors, you got to take a, set that up. You got to add it to b. We know you just add the components, right? And you'll get vector a plus b, and then our, this will surely give us our answer. And after that, I'll take the magnitude of this. So it's a nice, we'll just take it slow, step by step, but this will work on any problem. That as long as I get the two components for a and b, I can find this vector a plus b and find its magnitude and its length. So this is where, when you notice, they didn't give us the components, right? They give us the magnitude, and they give us the angles. So I'm going to start here. What's the components of vector x? 6, cos 60? Mm -hmm. 6 sine 60. Now don't laugh, but I'm going to write this. 2 cosine of, what's an angle right there in standard position? Zero? Mm -hmm. Zero degrees? Okay. Two cosine of zero degrees to sine of zero degrees. Now hold up. I think a lot of you just do this in your head. What are the two components for that vector? It's totally, totally just what? Two Horizontal? Two comma zero. So you do not have to write this. I just wanted to point this out. You can do this with any problem. If I had a vector going down this way, but you know it was 270 degrees, you can make two cosine 270 degrees. Two sine. Or if it was over here. And when one of the problems, number, uh, if you want to do number 32 out of the textbook, it had a vector down here. And the angle here was 30 degrees. So if this was 30, how far around would this be? 330. So you got it. If they had a length of five, five cosine 330, five sine of 330, and you would just follow the same step-by-step -step procedure. 